Welcome to the Soft Life with Sadie Baddies. Sadie Baddies is the antidote to mental health stigma, and this podcast is hosted by yours truly, Priscilla O. Adjman. We are a virtual sanctuary centering Black and multiracial people, and we prioritize the mental and emotional nourishment that is the foundation of collective healing in our communities. Thank you for being here. Happy November, baddies. Welcome back to the Soft Life I don't know about you, but I just feel like there's something perfect about dropping a brand new episode at the very beginning of a new month, which just happens to be my favorite month and my birthday month as well. So happy November. I wanted to do this solo episode as a check-in, a chit-chat, and just a way of easing all of us back into this new month with new energy. So I hope that you have your matcha, your coffee, your water, whatever it is that you like to sip on. Or if you're listening to this while you're running errands or going to work, just I hope that this episode hits home and is a way for you to recharge yourself. So let's recap on the last few months. I, as you know, have been doing a bunch of amazing interviews for season two of this podcast. But on a personal level, I wanted to kind of catch you up on what I've been up to. So... Recently, in the last couple of months, I started a brand new job. So I am currently working as a senior marketing associate um, at a digital business consulting company, and it's been going very well so far. So I started that in August of this year. I actually went to Mexico earlier this summer, which was amazing, and I went to Tulum. It was such a great way to recharge. I needed that trip so badly (laughs) and I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to just take a real break a true break this summer um, which was much needed and most recently I shot a campaign with one of my favorite brands so you will be seeing that soon if you follow Sadie Baddies on social media you'll definitely be seeing that soon and Definitely, you know, connect with us on all of our social media channels because that's really where you'll get daily updates. You'll um, hear about events or any collaborations that we have. So stay tapped in and stay tuned for that brand collaboration. Currently, right now, I just feel like I've been in a season of deep, deep focus. I am definitely in my hibernation era and I really feel like I've just been focusing on obviously this new job i've been also really enjoying talking to all of the amazing guests that we've had on this podcast so far and so far we've had four amazing guests we started off season two with dr chanel ramsevic and in that episode we talked all about generational healing i loved this episode i felt like it was just a breath of fresh air to have Someone in the mental health field, like Dr. Chanel Remsubik, who is an expert, however, she's so down to earth and it was so amazing to just have this really, really organic conversation about generational healing. So if you haven't checked out the episode, definitely give it a listen. Secondly, we had Dr. Akuya Boteng, who is a fellow Ghanaian, and she and I talked about starting your healing journey. So if you're new to starting you know your healing journey especially if it involves therapy but even if it doesn't involve therapy i think that this episode was such a breath of fresh air as well um again because just having somebody who is really well versed in this area and knows what they're talking about and just provides like a gentle safe space i think this would have been a perfect episode to listen to if i had just been starting my healing journey years ago i would have loved to listen to this episode And then we also had Dr. Ebony Butler, who is a relationship food strategist and a therapist as well. And she also spoke about recovering from food and body trauma. And that episode was extremely eye-opening. I loved talking to Dr. Ebony because she's, first of all, she's great. She is so easy to talk to, but we really, really shared a lot of you know, some of the cultural stigma that comes with trying to recover from food and body trauma, um, red flags, and how to really heal our relationship with our bodies. I think ever since I've had that episode with her and had that conversation with her, I have been really examining my relationship with my body, myself, and I know a lot of people resonated with that episode as well. So definitely give that one a listen too. 
And last but not least, and most recently, we had the amazing and the lovely Ree Turner, um, formerly known as Plant Based Princess, but she is an amazing content creator. She is a plant based queen. And so she really broke down how she went about starting her wellness journey, starting her content creation journey. Um, if you know her or you have been watching her YouTube channel like I have for the last few years, she makes truly beautiful visuals and I think it was just amazing to be able to have a conversation with her so I really just want to take a moment to thank all of our guests for being on the show we have a full season planned ahead so there will be more guests but I'm so grateful to be able to speak to these amazing people and these amazing women who are really sharing their light with us and I'm very very excited for the rest of this season um, of the soft life So today's episode, as you can tell from the title, is all about growing your in real life and your digital community while staying in your lane. So I'm going to break down this topic in three parts. And before I get into it, I want to really share how I came about even deciding on this, this conversation. And for me, I do get sometimes I do get emails or DMs or even LinkedIn messages asking if I can share kind of my story. Like, how did I start Sadie Baddies? What was the motivation behind it? How did I build this community? And if you know, you know, if you're part of the Sadie Baddies community, meaning you follow us all throughout our social media channels, or if you've come to an event, or you've been listening to this podcast for you know, a while, whatever the case is, you know that that it is both a virtual and an in real life community as well. So I do get people asking me questions about it. And I think this would have been helpful to share, you know, for any any content creator or any small business owner who really wants to just get started um, and doesn't know where to start. These are things that I wish I had known earlier. And I want to share this episode to anyone who wants to start their own community or just is curious about um, how I went about it. And, you know, nobody's perfect. I don't think that the way I went about it is perfect. I definitely made a lot of mistakes, but I, I do think that this episode is valuable in that sense. I'm just being completely honest, like about my journey, my story. So... I'm going to break it down into three parts. So first, we're going to talk about growing your digital community. So this means building your online presence, building the trust and developing a relationship and the space of the individual of the individuals in your community who just get it. So meaning the people in your community who understand you who vibe with you, who relate to you, who engage with your posts or engage with your content. And this is the, these are your core people. Then we're going to also dive into building your in real life community. So having a tangible support system of people who show up for you and vice versa. So this includes your friends, your family, your network, etc. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about staying in your lane. In this part, I really want to share and open up about how I've learned to stay in my lane as somebody who's in the content creation space, specifically in in the wellness space, knowing your niche, um, knowing what works for you and not getting caught up in competition or imposter syndrome. So let's dive in. Okay, so first we're going to talk about growing your digital community. I have broken this up into a myth about this specific topic and then the reality. So a myth about growing your digital community is that growing an online community is easy and all you need is clout. That couldn't be farther from the truth. The reality is that growing an organic online community takes time, dedication, patience, and empathy. And one thing that I want to also mention is that growing an online community is not something that happens overnight. 
I think despite seeing people get viral or go viral on TikTok or go viral on Twitter, whatever social media platform, that doesn't necessarily mean they have a community. I think a lot of us have actually seen the opposite happen where someone has a lot of followers, maybe even a million followers on TikTok or hundreds of thousands of followers on a social media platform, but they have an event or they sell merch and they can't even get the support from those people. Why is that? Because sometimes we conflate those numbers with true, genuine connection. And um, one thing that I have learned when it comes to growing an online community is that the first thing I did before I even went about thinking to myself, okay, how can I grow this community? And I think it starts with one thing. You, you pick what you believe is relevant to your to your um your in community online so for me i had to sit down and identify who is a sadie baddie you know i i designed this this space called sadie baddies this platform this brand this business called sadie baddies and what i did was i actually built a persona um around Sadie baddies I built who is the who is the the person the ideal person who would come to this page who would come to this space and I built my brand around that so I had different tiers of personas of people who might be a sadie baddie so for example it could be somebody who's been on a healing journey for what seems like their whole life or somebody who is really really new to this and really doesn't have the tools or understanding to know anything about mental health or emotional health or maybe they don't even know where to start or it could be someone who is curious but they really haven't deep dived into what it is to really understand the nuances of of your emotional and your mental health so I kind of put myself into these three boxes and there there's a little bit more, more nuance than just these three boxes but just generally speaking what I did was I really tried to think about okay who is the person who would come to you know a sadie baddies event who is the person who would listen to a sadie baddies podcast and I envisioned him because I actually know these people in real life you know so I think taking a step back identifying who who is my target um person that I want to reach out to And then second, what I did was develop a business plan and a strategy. So rewind three years back, Sadie Baddies is just being born and I am at a job which is giving me absolutely no sense of fulfillment. I'm at this dead end job, you know, at my desk, just thinking about how I can inspire myself again. And this is way before I had any type of business strategy. But what I did know is that eventually I would have to develop some type of plan or some type of strategy to help me actually move past just the idea portion of my brand. So little by little, and this really took a a while for me to do. At first, I truly was just scouring the internet. I was scouring Google, YouTube. Um, I was reading books listening to podcasts, um, watching videos. I would go to events or just try to meet people by word of mouth. And honestly, it that that was like the first like year, year and a half, maybe even two years of Sadie Baddies was me just trying to figure out what exactly I was doing. I knew that I wanted it to be more than just a social media page, but I didn't know what direction to go towards. What I did know is that I didn't want to spend too much time in the wilderness of it all, one thing I'm glad I did was I started to outsource certain things. So for example, when I started a YouTube channel, I knew that I would need someone to shoot the videos for my YouTube channel. And so I hired um, a friend and, you know, they were able to help me put that out and produce that. And when I wanted to start really thinking about Sadie Baddies as more of a, of a brand and not just an Instagram page, I hired somebody who had worked in brand content strategy before and they helped me strategize and come up with a, a plan for this. And I learned how to write a business plan. I learned how to 
write a media kit. I learned how to send pitches to brands. And little by little, I started developing this kind of library of knowledge, but it didn't happen overnight because it took literally years for me to feel comfortable even trusting myself to do this. Because remember, I'm not somebody with a business background or even like a communications background. I am somebody who graduated with a biology degree and has a master's in public health. So I came from this very science based background where you don't really have to think about business or business strategy or any of those things. So a lot of this was me feeling overwhelmed at the learning curve. But when I started to embrace the learning curve, I realized that all everything I needed was around me. I just had to look for it. Um, And then lastly, the step that I took to start growing this digital community was I started to strengthen my connections with other like-minded brands and organizations. So for example, um, if you've been around for a while, you know that Saudi Baddies has had um, some amazing collaborations in the past. We've collaborated with Nike, we've collaborated with Rare Beauty, um, which we actually did recently this year. We've collaborated with Pinterest and um, Geneva, which is our community group chat app, and a lot of other brands. And I think it's just amazing that little by little, it's not necessarily going to happen overnight, but the more rooted that I became in this work, the, the more organic it just became. So when I started to be more outspoken about Saudi Baddies and what it meant and what it was designed for, I think it just resonated with people. I think when you create something that people are searching for, naturally people are going to gravitate towards it. So little by little, that visibility grew. And I'm really grateful for some of the connections that I've made over time. And I will say that just because somebody, you know, you might just see the end result of somebody's hard work, right? Um, I don't think anybody knows other than I would say my my man, honestly, <laughs> I don't think anybody knows how many times I doubt myself. I don't think anyone knows how many times I've, you know, had a feeling of I just don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this. I'm not well versed enough for this. I'm not educated enough to, to do this or feeling, you know, shrinking myself in spaces where I just feel unfamiliar So just know that you may not see that part, but you never know what somebody is going through. Somebody that you might even look up to or be inspired by, they they have their days too. And I definitely have had my days. Um, But advice that I would suggest, if you are looking to start your own brand or your own online community, I should say, you have to figure out what your why is. What is your why? Why do you want to start something? And it's it's really a question that has to be so deeply rooted in who you in in who you want to become because a part of that is going to involve your personal evolution in my opinion. I don't think you can just start something willy-nilly and just expect it to blow up and say, "Okay, my job here's done." I personally feel like when you are deeply rooted in your why and you know why you're doing something that is what is going to help you persist throughout the times where you doubt yourself throughout the times where you want to give up or you feel like you're not smart enough to do something your why is always going to be the reason why you come back to it another thing that I would advise is that discipline is greater than motivation We can be motivated by watching a a movie or watching or seeing a TikTok or seeing somebody accomplish something that looks really inspiring and be like, oh, I'm so motivated by that. I think it's important to have motivation. But to be honest with you, what matters more than motivation is discipline. If you don't commit to a practice of discipline and discipline, meaning that consistent effort every single day or as often as you can. Because rest is important, as we know. We don't play that here. (laughs) We are not hustle culture over here. But I do believe in discipline. I think that discipline is the secret sauce 
to be honest with you. I think that discipline gets you way farther than, than motivation does because discipline is all about you doing it regardless. Are you going to still put in this much effort if you don't get recognized, if you don't get, you know, this end result that you're looking for at the end of the day? Discipline is truly what brings you back to your, again, similar to your why, discipline is a is an anchoring factor when it comes to growing a a brand or growing a a community online especially online where you're not seeing the people that you're interacting with face to face but you just have to trust that what you're doing is going to gain enough momentum that it's going to it's going to make an impact one day and last but not least asking for help and knowing when to pivot I will say one of the soft life values that I personally think is knowing when to ask for help. You don't have to be strong all the time. You don't have to be independent all the time. You don't need to teach yourself every single thing that Steve Jobs taught himself, right? You need to learn when to pivot. You need to learn when to ask for help because you're going to save yourself so much time and energy when you allow somebody who has done something for a long time to help you. For example, right now, my my partner, he records my all these episodes of The Soft Life, right? But that's because he has experience with this technology. He has experience with using these tools. I could do all of that myself. It's not that I'm incapable, but... When you have somebody who is already an expert and is well-versed in what they're doing, allowing them to help you not only makes the product better, it makes your life easier as well. And I think learning how to outsource certain skills is extremely valuable, even if that means investing in certain things. For example, I've invested in um, my logo. Um, I've invested in in having my website done. I've invested in... um, certain legal services that I needed to have. So for example, you just need to have the understanding that you're not going to be able to do everything yourself and knowing what your strengths are as well as what maybe is too time consuming for you to manage. Um, and you're not meant to do everything alone, especially if you're, you're trying to build something from the ground up. Okay, so let's talk about building your in real life community. So one myth that I believe when it comes to building your in-person or your IRL in real life community is that the myth is that it's impossible to find true communities these days because everyone is in it for themselves. I don't think that's true. I think that the right people will naturally gravitate to you and vice versa and you won't have to perform for anyone. And if you listen to last week's episode with Re, you know that we shared some similar feelings about that, not having to perform for the people that truly love and understand you. But I'll say it again, because the right people will naturally gravitate towards you. When you're building a community in person, a real tangible community of people, you shouldn't have to feel like you have to put on a show. You shouldn't have to feel like you have to play this guessing game with the people around you. You should be able to be yourself. So one thing that I did, three steps that I took when I was looking to build my in real life community was I put myself out there. I started going to events, even if it meant going to events by myself. Or if you're not comfortable going to in-person events, you can definitely check out virtual events. And I signed up for virtual events um of brands from brands or companies or organizations that I think would be interesting or I would learn something from or they would teach me something um being able to introduce yourself to people when you go to events so for me I know that I always had business cards on me and it might sound kind of old school but I don't think it is I think that it shows that you take your brand seriously. Also, our Sadie Baddies business cards are very cute, I must say, so myself. But yeah, like I think you don't need to feel embarrassed for trying to network or put yourself out there or just truly trying to find people who relate to you. Number two is that I followed people online who inspired me and also brought out my curiosity. So there's a lot of, so many amazing 
um, individuals, artists, creators. And I also think it's good to diversify who you're following, you know? Not everybody that I follow is into mental health or wellness. You know, some people are musicians. Some people are fashion designers. Some people work in tech. Um, some people are writers. I don't think it needs to be people who do the same exact thing as you. I actually think the more diverse, the better. Because then you're getting people who are from all different walks of life and have different experiences to share. Um, just putting yourself out there, both online, but in real life too, and... I do think, you know, obviously being in New York City and living here, it's been easier for me to do this because New York is just one of those places where you're going to you're always going to run into somebody who's like has the most obscure job you've ever heard of in your entire life and like lives in Soho, but like you're not you're really not sure how, but they just do. And that's just New York for you. But if you are living in a smaller town or you live in the suburbs or you live in a different country, I still think that there are opportunities to look for virtual events and look for um, online communities. And I will be sure to link some of my favorites below, but I definitely encourage you to branch out a bit and not be afraid to introduce yourself to new people. And I think this is overlooked when it comes to building an online community, not just an online community, but when it comes to building your in real life community, you have to learn how to hold space for other people and vice versa. Holding space for other people, meaning if you're trying to develop connections, you're trying to develop friendships and you're just trying to find people who get you you're gonna have to learn how to hold space for other people meaning you know when you meet up with somebody for the first time or you're exchanging words for the first time and this is your first time meeting whether it's virtually or in person being able to give that person space to really share how they feel um and that doesn't mean that that person should just like trauma dump you know if you're especially if you're not inclined to be receptive to that because you you know you want to be mindful of how people are being vulnerable and how you're receiving that of course but in my opinion I, I just think that sometimes we don't know how to hold space for each other and I think that's what's missing from so many communities now is that we are so accustomed to just seeing everybody do stuff online that we just assume oh well that person posted on their story today so they're fine or, oh, I saw them at a party and they looked okay and they looked happy, so they're fine. That that might not be the case. So learning that you can dig deeper, you can have conversations with people, you don't always have to stick to just what is superficial or what's in the, you know, the pop culture or the news cycle circuit. You can really start to develop deeper connections with people when people feel emotionally safe with you as well. And this does take time. I feel like it's not going to happen overnight. I think some of my strongest and deepest connections and friendships have been friendships that have been building for years. And, you know, maybe I met somebody five years ago and just now this year, I feel really close to them and I feel I'm able to be vulnerable with them and vice versa. So just giving yourself time and grace and knowing that it's not going to happen overnight is just a reminder because sometimes we can feel like, you know, you're missing out or you start having fear of missing out. But in reality, at whose pace? It needs to be at your own natural pace. It doesn't it's not going to be something that you can just control. Um, And developing deep rooted connections with people you love is really, really, it's a big effort. Um, I also don't think you should feel bad or feel like you don't have enough people in your life. Even if you only have one person in your life who truly, truly cares about you and truly loves you for who you are, And whether it's like your best friend from your childhood or maybe somebody new that you met if you moved to a new city, I think it's really important to just appreciate that. You may not have, you may not be somebody who ends up having this big girl group or this big like mixed group of friends and, you know, not everybody's going to have that, but valuing the people who do show up for you is enough. It's more than enough. And what matters is that having people in real life that actually support you and vice versa. 
So my advice, again, for folks who are trying to find their people, and, you know, we do have an episode about this, about um, finding your tribe and growing up first gen. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I believe that's episode seven, um, but, you know, give it a listen. I think there's a lot of gems there that you can revisit. But my advice for anyone looking to build an in real life community is to put yourself out there. Number one, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Number two would be to start slow and don't rush the process. And number three, be genuine. Be able to listen to people, be able to hold space, be able to have deeper conversations. And I know it might start off like Maybe you do have shallow conversations and that's fine. But if that's just the basis of all of your friendships or all of your relationships, it can feel very lonely and you can start to feel like this. Sometimes these relationships can feel transactional. I will say that. So being genuine in what you want in a friendship, what you can offer, what you can provide. And I just hope that you find your people. Because it's hard out here. You know, we need we need people that are going to hold hold us close. And last but not least, let's talk about staying in your lane. I actually made a video about this or a TikTok about this um, because there was a tweet that I saw that deeply resonated with me and it was all about staying in your lane. But the myth about staying in your lane is that this is a dog eat dog world. And there's only room for one person to be the best. In my opinion, this is a very capitalist, competitive way of thinking. Because in reality, there is a seat at the table for everyone. And when you really think about it, when you, and I know that this is a classic example when it comes to comparison. But when you go to the grocery store, even if you go to the bodega across the street, There's going to be more than one type of soda for you to choose from. There's going to be more than one type of water for you to choose from. There's variety and that's for a reason. And I don't believe that you need to play into this idea, especially when it comes to people and it comes to community, that there's only room for one person. I do think that there sometimes can be a scarcity mindset that runs even in the creative space and the wellness space just like any other industry. I know that I have personally have moments, I've had moments of feeling left out. I've had moments of feeling overlooked as a creative. And to be honest, I think sometimes we, if you're new to a space or you're new to starting a brand or community and you're looking for someone who could be a mentor to you or someone who, you know, maybe you could look up to and then and they end up being mean or they just end up being someone that's really cold and standoffish and you have to understand that yes everybody's entitled to their space everybody's entitled to their time and their energy and being selective about it however I do think sometimes we forget how we can let the scarcity mindset creep in and this entitlement creep in as well I really think that sometimes in I will just be completely candid, y'all. I personally think that in the black wellness space, especially with black women founders, that sometimes it can be competitive. And it hurts me to say that, but it can. And it's really because we've adopted this capitalist way of thinking and we've put it back into our own safe spaces or spaces that are supposed to be safe. And I don't think that it's healthy, you know? I really think that you are supposed to be comfortable enough seeing other people win. You're supposed to be comfortable enough seeing other people grow with or without you. And if you have a problem with that, I feel like it's something that you need to dig deeper and check and and ask yourself why you feel entitled to someone else's growth or someone else's success or someone else's happiness. And one thing I will say is that um, what I had to do when it came to really growing Saddy Baddies and growing this podcast, growing the Soft Life podcast, is that I had to focus on what makes Saddy Baddies unique. And I had to hone in on that. I am not every 
person's cup of tea. I never will be, but I know that this platform helps at least one person every single day and that's enough for me. So focusing and honing in on what makes you special, what makes you unique is key. Another thing that I really had to learn was to not compare myself to others. And if I did catch myself comparing myself to others, which is normal because I'm only human, I had to ask myself, what is the source of this discomfort? What is what is the reason that I'm comparing myself to someone who's a full-time content creator or people who have different levels of experience or people who have different following me? Why would I do that? Why would I take away from my own growth and everything that I'm proud of to look at somebody else's paper? What is the reason? And comparing your day 60 to someone's day 1,987 doesn't make any sense because, again, you're looking at someone's trajectory in a completely uh, subjective way because you're not looking at what it took for them to get there. And even if they, they had a different route than you did, maybe they had things easier for them or they had more connections than you did. So what? Focusing on yourself and focusing on what makes you great and what makes you unique and whether you're starting a brand from scratch, whether you are, you know, you're into wellness or you're into fashion or you're into beauty or you're into tech, whatever the case may be, there's always going to be someone who has an idea that maybe is a little bit similar to yours or maybe is looks like yours. That does not mean that you have to neglect your creative spark that started it all. You know, I would be so mad at myself if I didn't pick up this mic and start this podcast because, oh, there's enough black wellness podcasts out there. Yeah, but not everybody's going to have your story. Not everybody's going to do the same thing as you. And I think that's what you have to remember. That's what staying in your lane is all about. It's focusing on you and yourself and what you can contribute and what you can add to the conversation because I'm not going to be able to reach every single black person or every single person of color through this podcast. I'm not going to be able to reach every single person who is seeking mental health or wants uh, mental health resources or wants to be able to create a dialogue where they feel safe around. I can't be the only person doing that. Other people also need to be part of this this movement, which they are, you know? And I think sometimes we, I will say that I think sometimes people get caught up in being the first. Being the first doesn't mean that you necessarily have the most impact or being the first doesn't mean that you've touched all the people that you possibly can and so that means that nobody else needs to step up. That's not true. And that's, again, that's a very capitalist way of thinking if you feel like somebody else can't, Also, especially when it comes to social causes like mental health or um, personal causes like, yeah, mental health, wellness, um, healing, anything like that. I personally feel like you can't focus on being the first because that's not enough. The fact that we even have to create this space shows us that there's, there's not enough people doing this to begin with. That's why we started this, right? So don't get caught up in being the first. It's great to be acknowledged as a first, right? Like it's great to be acknowledged as, oh, I was the first person to do this. I was the first person um, on Instagram doing this. That's great. Congratulations. However, (laughs) don't get caught up on that because you're going to keep saying that five years from now, you're going to keep telling yourself that you were the first person to do so-and-so or X, Y, Z. And guess what? 15 other people are going to start doing the same exact thing and you're going to start feeling like you are the only person that is entitled to having or sharing this space with with others. And that is a really dangerous way of thinking. It's very dangerous to think that because what you do is you start looking at everybody as a competition. And I don't think that being competitive in... You know, there's obviously if you're if you're a business, you're going to have a level of competition, right? Nike and Adidas, Pepsi and Cola and McDonald's and I don't even know, child, because I wouldn't even say Burger King. But <laughs> anyway, I really feel like you're always going to have a level of competition, right? It's a free market. But at the same time, 
when you're really breaking it down and you're focusing on your mission, you're focusing on your why, then you shouldn't be competing with other people who are also trying to support the cause. So that's just one thing I've been wanting to um, to share. Um, I think as we start to grow our collective consciousness as people, as individuals, as communities, a lot of our messages are going to overlap and that's okay. That is okay. I've learned to let that go. I I had to let that go because if I had a dollar for every time I've seen something or something or someone who I feel, oh, maybe they, they were influenced by this or, Oh, maybe it's, listen, at the end of the day, if the message is getting across, it's getting across. Nobody is you and that is your power, period. I think that um, one thing I also did that helped me to not get so stuck on this and so worried about somebody else and stuck in that comparison or the imposter syndrome trap, because I kind of feel like imposter syndrome is on the other side of that, right, is educating myself. Finding what are my weak spots? What are the areas that I really need to grow in? So I started to look at the areas in my, not just my life, but in my my brand, my business that I feel like I could have, you know, educated myself on more. So doing it constructively, doing it in a way that's healthy, not breaking yourself down, not, you know, making yourself feel small, but doing it in a way so that you're learning. And that way, when you put in the time and energy and effort into educating your your weak spots or strengthening your weak spots, you can come out confident knowing that, listen, I put in the time and the effort into getting better at what I create and what I share and never stop learning. That's truly the only way to go about it is if you commit to never stop learning, you're always gonna stay in your lane, in my opinion. Advice that I would have for other people if you're on this journey as a creative or somebody who is a brand owner or a business is that remember that you are you and that is your power. Keep your eyes on your own paper. You know, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Focus on yourself. Focus on on what you can contribute and, and what you can improve instead of worrying about what other people are doing and zooming out a bit. Sometimes when you are too fixated on someone else's journey or someone else's trajectory or what they showcase, it's all perception. Perception is everything because again, you're only seeing the end result of what they what they went through and you don't need to fixate on especially as a business owner, brand owner, you shouldn't fixate on what somebody else is doing, especially if it doesn't involve you. So zooming out a little bit and not getting caught up in the matrix of it all, that's really one, that's that's something to keep in mind because I think sometimes we can get caught up, especially, I see this a lot like on TikTok or on Instagram. I just see that people get really, really, really caught up in other people's lives and their livelihood and it's really that's not what it's about. It's really not. Um, and lastly, I would say to stay curious and keep learning, perfect your craft over time. Life is, life is long. You, you're not gonna become a guru overnight. You're not, (laughs) it's not something that can happen in three days. And once you commit to the fact that your journey is going to be unique to yourself. It's going to be, be reflective of your experiences and your challenges as well as your triumphs. Staying curious about your weaknesses and how you can strengthen them through educating yourself. Like I said, through collaboration, through networking, through building an actual in-person community. That's how you're going to hone in on your craft. And I think a lot of artists show us this in many ways. I mean, I just have to shout out some of my favorite artists and creatives, Solange Knowles. Um, I saw her composition at the New York City Ballet earlier this month, and it took my breath away. It was incredible. And just knowing how multifaceted she is and how amazing it is that she created this beautiful piece this composition for 
the New York City Ballet. And, you know, she also is an artist and she's a, a director. And I, I love multifaceted black women um, like Issa Rae, like Michaela Cole, and so many other individuals who truly don't worry so much about the visibility, but they just let their work speak for itself. And I think that is so valuable in a world that really thrives on visibility, being able to do something because of the hell of it and and how it makes you feel, how it makes other people feel at the end of the day is so powerful. So to wrap up, let's talk about the key takeaways again for growing your digital community and your in IRL community as well as staying in your lane. So Growing your digital community takes time and patience. So remember not to rush the process. Number two, you can't do everything alone. So asking for help and outsourcing whenever you need it is key. And number three, comparison will only make you lose sight of how far you've come. I think we all know the phrase that comparison is the thief of joy, but comparison is also the thief of gratitude. When you're comparing yourself to other people and you're not staying in your lane, you're taking away from the moments to be grateful for, the growth that you have accomplished, the successes that you have made if you're always worried about what somebody else is doing and what they got going on. So I hope this episode speaks to especially my fellow creatives, my fellow part-time entrepreneurs, part-time creatives like myself, people who are working full-time jobs while still being creative and um, having creative businesses. I know it's not easy. I know it can be really lonely, but I really think that the more we have these these conversations openly and not in this very gatekeeping kind of way that doesn't help anyone, um, the better that we can become, you know, we can build our communities to be more sustainable in this way. So if you love this episode, please be sure to give us a five star rating. If you love it and share it with somebody that you love, somebody that you're inspired by, someone you care about. I also really enjoy just sitting here talking um, and having a solo episode. I feel reconnected to y'all and I hope you feel the same, but have a beautiful November and I will see you next week. To stay connected, join Saddy Baddies on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and more, and sign up for our monthly newsletter on SaddyBaddies.com to stay in the loop. As always, we can't grow this podcast without you, so if you've already provided us with a review or a five-star rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, thank you so much. This may seem like a small effort, but it truly does support and grow our community. Sending you hella love and stay soft, baddie. Thank you.